Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 120. This episode is with the hilarious, smart, incredibly driven, my new friend, Leland B. Martin. He was great. Super fun to talk to. Really fun stories. Great to get to know him. Uh, We talk about growing up loving basketball. How he basically got into acting kind of randomly. We talk about uh, traveling to New York from South Jersey for auditions while working nights. We talk about dealing with anxiety before auditions, how he kind of goes into the room and is able to handle all of that. We talk about shooting his first movie in Alaska, a hilarious story about uh, his first short film that he worked on. We talk about doing whatever it takes to achieve your dreams. We talk about how important it is for an actor to train, to know what you're doing, to kind of up your game and to be able to compete in such a competitive market. And you can't have Leland on and not talk about Ari. Leland plays Ari on Boomerang, which is on Wednesday nights at 10.30 on BET, and he is incredible, an amazing character, an amazing actor. Uh, We talk about what it is like to bring that character to life, the responsibility he feels that he has to represent a, a human being, and all the different layers that Ari has, and I highly recommend it if you aren't checking it out already. But before you do that, please check out this episode of The Interesting Podcast, episode number 120, with Leland B. Martin. Theme song time. One thing Skype has taught me, it's that there's a lot of people named the same thing. Oh, there's, yeah, there's absolutely. So many, there's so many. I had one guest on one time, and there was like eight of them with the exact same name. I was like, I guess wow. we're going down the phone book. I'm just calling people. <laughs> yeah, see, you know, it, it's it's interesting, too, because my name, it, it's it's sort of unique, but also, you know, it, it's 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 common as well. Yeah. You know, it uh, just depends on, on uh, you know, where you are. Um, but uh like I, I, as an actor, I throw the B in the middle because when I first um, started acting, if you were to Google Leland Martin, uh, a country singer would come up. Uh, oh. There's a country singer named Leland Martin. Uh, he had some song called Stone Cold Hands or what have you. Beautiful. Um, never actually heard his music, but he was the first one to come up. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> since I was just starting off. Uh, uh, I, I was like, man, let me go ahead and throw the B in there so that when people want to Google me and figure out who I am, there's a distinction. You know, right. they, don't, they don't look up some country singer. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you don't want to show up to an audition and be like, I love your music. And you're like, oh, hey, hey, damn it. All right. Exactly. <laughs> you, you, exactly. Out of principle, you have to start carrying a guitar around. You're like, well, all right. Right, <laughs> right, right. They get me confused with the country singer. Like, come on, man. Like, there you <laughs> I'm go. an actor. Dude, have you ever yeah. looked up your name on Facebook and find someone else who has your exact same name and been like, "Oh, hi. um, no, not not the whole Leland Martin." Um, yeah, you should no, try. I have. Yeah, I haven't <laughs> gotten that. Oh, it's 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 a uh, it's a lot, huh? Yeah. It, well, it's wild. I so I've done it, obviously. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's another guy <laughs> named Brian Balance from the exact same city I was born. I was wow. like, "What is happening?" Like, wow. how, how does what the law of averages, how does that even work? You know, it, it, it's funny. Our, our names are kind of similar, too, because uh, my, my first name is, is unique, but my last name is pretty generic. You know, yeah. you, your, your last name is pretty unique, though. Like the last name of, uh, of Balance is I mean, I haven't I haven't met anybody with the last name Balance. Thank you. Thank you. My mom gave it to me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. Makes yeah, sense. Throw the extra L in there for more balance. There you go. Yeah. You know, stay, another L stabilizer. Yeah, you get it. You get it. You understand yeah, me. Sure. Like, it's a pillar. It's a yeah. pillar. And it stands <laughs> right in the middle of it, too. You know, holds it all up. That's yeah, right. I get it. So we just need to figure out how to combine ourselves like Voltron. And then, there you go. Then we'll be truly unique. Because Brian, yeah, yeah. I know like 50 Brians. I don't know any Leland's. Yeah, you know, listen, name your name your son Leland and, and yeah, you'll, there we have, go. you'll have it. You'll have it. Name your son Balance, just cause. <laughs> right, just because, right, right. We're making <laughs> like, a pact right now. 
<laughs> I've cut my yeah. hand. Did you cut yours? <laughs> yes, I did. I perfect. did. Perfect. You know, I crossed my fingers on the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've done this before. We get it. Ah. We get it. <laughs> How's quarantine treating you? Oh, man. Um, you know, it, it's uh, staring at these walls. Yeah. Are, uh, <laughs> you know, it's pretty tough. You know, like I, I actually look forward to these moments when I get to talk to people that I, I've never met before. Yeah. Same, <laughs> same, same. I, I've never yeah. been more happy to have this show than now. <laughs> right, right, man. So, I mean, like, you know, you, you've watched all of Netflix. You, you've seen yep. the Tiger King and people yeah. getting thrown in the Tiger Cage. Dude. All types of craziness. How crazy is that show? Yeah, oh, man. Bonkers. Bonkers. <laughs> it's when you think life is stranger than fiction, then you're like, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, you know, wow. no, 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 like, yeah, it, it's just ridiculous. So, I mean, you know, after watching 30,000 uh, hours of Netflix and, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, taking, taking, like doing two, two a day workouts, you know, trying to do some push ups and running yeah. and, uh, just hanging out at home and, and, uh, looking at the walls, man, um, <laughs> you know, but trying to just stay healthy, you know what I mean? Like it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty serious out there. So sure. You know, sure. We got to do our part, I guess. Are you good with free time? I feel like I'm not. I, like, um, I, I gotta be doing stuff. I, I'm I'm getting better with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting better with it. You know, um, you know, starting to starting to fill up my day with more productive things. You know, actually, it was it was it's kind of crazy though because when all of this kind of broke before it all broke. I was running ridiculous, um, you know, yeah. between auditions and, and um, other projects and, and um, you know, the, the premiere of, of Boomerang and doing press and promo for it. Yeah. Um, you know, I was running like crazy. I mean, literally, our, our premiere, you know, took place, uh, I, I believe, the it was like the 10th. And, um, you know, really stuff kind of went down after like that next that next week. Yeah. You know, yeah. so um, I, at first I just needed a break. <laughs> you know, so so when everything kind of shut down, I was like, well, you know, I guess this is the perfect time for it to happen because, yeah. um, you know, for me personally, anyway, um, just just because I, I kind of needed a break. But, you know, now it's been it's been a good like two weeks since all of that has taken place. And it's kind of like, all right, well, um, yeah, I, I'm ready to get back productive. So I'm yeah. starting to get better <laughs> with this free time thing now is basically what I'm saying. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I think like our sort of personalities, it kind of fits the acting lifestyle because it's such a hustle all the time. It's like for sure you got to put that drive somewhere. Yes, you know, so it works out when you're like going from one thing to the next in auditions, and it keeps on going. And then you think you want to break, <laughs> like uh, right? Right, in. <laughs> right. You know, just a short, a, a short, short uh, time to catch your breath, but. You know, like I, I, I was resenting, you know, I, I mean, I, it was cool that I got to take a break because my body needed it and all that. But like I was I was re resenting the fact that, um, you know, everything shut down. I mean, of course, with this being a serious situation and all that. But I mean, just as far as like personally within my own, you know, progression mode, like I was in such a good work groove, you know, and, you know, when right. you've gotten a couple of auditions under your belt and uh you, you know, you, you, you're feeling really good about the way that the work is going. You know, those things are going well for you. And, um, you know, you, you, you're booking work and doing and, and it's just like everything just kind of halted. And it's just like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> this is not everyone is running at full speed all the time. Yeah, yeah. right. 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 <laughs> man, I just want to keep working. So now it's like, all right, got to figure out how to. Uh, how to fill this day up, you know, productively so that I can kind of stay in shape mentally and stay in shape physically as I possibly can. So that when this thing, you know, when, when everything gets back to normal, I can kind of be right back in stride, you know? Yeah. Were you like that growing up? Always got to do something. Always a lot of drive. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was the kid who carried a basketball to the grocery store. Nice. Nice. You know, yeah. I was that kid. Like I, I was a, I was a huge sports head. I was a basketball head. You know, so, um, you know, I, I wanted to be the greatest basketball player to ever play the game. You Hell know? yeah. Uh, so as a kid early on, I mean, you know, I, I, I was I was that kid that used to get uh, get in trouble for at midnight. I'm downstairs dribbling the ball and my yeah. mom is like, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm trying to sleep. You know, right. I'm, I'm that kid. You know, I, I can't carry I can't carry groceries in both hands because I have a basketball in my right hand. Yeah, so obviously. I can only help you with half of them. Sorry. <laughs> I don't make the rules. I just enforce I them. I don't on. make the rules. You know, I just have to. I love basketball. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. There you go. Hey, it worked out for Jordan. 
I mean, yeah, he, yeah you know, exactly. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And, and you know, it, it worked out for me in a, in a different way. I, I didn't become I didn't become Air Jordan, but it did uh, develop a discipline inside of me, you know, that that I, I carried on with me to this day. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. There you go. What are your teams? Um, so I, I, I'm more of a, a player fan. Um, nice. You know, I'm, I'm from South Jersey, so I always have a love for Philadelphia. Yeah, you know, the, the you. Sixers and, and, and are, are, are will always be in my heart, especially because, you know, I grew up in the Iverson era. So Iverson was a right. Philly, it's a local team. And, you know, that was my guy. So, you know, uh, always a Philly fan, but I'm a LeBron fan also. Like he, He's my guy. So wherever he is, and just luckily he's in L.A., yeah. I'm in L.A. <laughs> it worked out. So it all works out for us, you know. <laughs> like I was, I was really looking forward to catching up on some of the games, you know, because the season, um, when the season started, we were we were in Atlanta shooting, right. so uh, you know I wasn't able to, to catch any of the Laker games um, this season or what have you. And um, you know, when we got back, it was press and it was a whole bunch of stuff. So you know, I was looking forward to getting getting uh, getting to go to to some of these games out here uh, this year, and then. Oh, guess what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it down, man. Shut it yeah. down. Man. So cool. Cool, cool. No lucky games for me. Right. right. That's fine. <laughs> We're fine. Totally fine. Fine, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't care. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. No. We're good no. over yep. here. Day, Absolutely. Day 115. <laughs> right. Right, right. right. From South Jersey. Right on what part? Uh, so I was raised in Willingboro, New Jersey, and I was born in uh, Camden, New Jersey. I was just about to say I got a buddy whose whole family is in Camden. I spent a week really? there. Yep. Yep. Nice. I don't nice. recommend it. No. No. <laughs> no, man. Camden is uh Camden <laughs> is in Chicago, man. Camden is a war zone in certain, it is. certain aspects of it, man. Uh, you know. So yeah. It was an experience. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I know it was. I know it was, trust me. Yeah, you know, I, I grew up around the corner, and uh, you know, like I said, I was born there, so trust me, I know. <laughs> yep, yeah, things you learn, things you learn. Mm-hmm. That's speaking of drive and hustle. A lot of people got that there, in one way or another. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, people, people out there are, are um, you know, survivalists. Yeah. You know, um, bo- when you're born in a rough environment, you know, you have to make do. And, um, you know, it, it's it's a, a more of a poverty stricken uh, environment. Um, so, you know, people become survivalists and, uh, yep. you know, you do what you know how in order to make it through every day. Exactly. And, uh, that's just, uh, you know, it, it makes a, a different type of person out of you. You know, it's funny. You ever see, you, you seen the movie Us? Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's interesting how um, Winston Duke's character, uh, you know, the father of the family, yeah. uh, you know, his his doppelganger, you know, really kind of has the upper hand on him as far as physical brutality and strength. And beat right. Him up. And it's like, right. everybody's like, Yo, how you go? How you such a punk? How you going to be a punk? Yeah. And it's just like, well, <laughs> well, technically, it's me beating me up. Right. Right. But you got to look at it like this. It's me in growing up in different circumstances. Right. Like the doppelganger came up a whole lot. Oh yeah, uh, uh, tougher than than the uh, actual uh, surface person, you know. So his background made him a lot rougher and it made him a lot resourceful in different ways. Absolutely, you know. And uh, I look at um, you know a lot of a lot of Canada folk the same way. You know, it's it's a survivalist mentality in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? So, you know, to grow up in a way it's rough and tumble. You know, you you gotta kind of adapt to your environment and be that way yourself. You know, so I understand it. Absolutely. And I think it's like you have the option to either become a victim of your circumstance or use it as fuel to get yourself out of the circumstance. And I find that a lot of people who've had, uh, like myself included, who's had like a rough childhood, you can turn that into something and it's like rocket fuel. So when you get to the point where you're playing the same game as the other people who haven't been through it, you have this upper hand because you weren't defined by it. It's pretty amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, I was I was watching an interview, um, you know, just actually a few minutes ago. Uh, two two basketball players were were on there live, and uh, one was like, "Yeah, you know, it's 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 so crazy because you know we we both grew up in poverty stricken environments to where you know we have a mentality if we want to get it, it 
we have to earn it. And, yeah. and you know, our, our sons are, are, are different because, you know, we're able to give them whatever. So, you know, my son will be like, hey, I want those fruit roll ups. And I'll be like, well, give me 15 push ups. And people will see him <laughs> in the aisle doing 15 push ups and looking at me like what? And I'm looking at them like what? Like, yeah, he's got to earn it. Like, he's got to learn how to earn it. And it's just like, you know, you, you th- those are the mentalities when you come up from places of, of, of poverty, rough beginnings, you know, um, it's that drive. And it's almost a fear a little bit because you don't yeah. want to go back. Oh, yeah. You don't want, um, you know, it, it, it's a it's a it's a motivator. You know, uh, I, I was talking with somebody recently um, and they asked me about, like, you know, my, my relationship with, with, with fear. And I said, you know, fear is something you want to you want to keep in control, of course, and, and, and you don't want it to overwhelm you. But also it's something that that causes a fire within you to keep you motivated as well. Like, you know, th- there's sure. a healthy fear as well, you know, where, um, you know, you don't want to go back to that poverty stricken environment. So it's that healthy fear that says, Hey, I'm getting my butt up and be productive today. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I can't allow, I can't allow my life to fall, to fall, uh, to, to the, to the demon of, of laziness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you're right. That, that'll lead us nowhere. So, um, you know, that, that healthy balance of, uh, uh, of fear, um, just coming from that, that rough and tumble, um, you know, uh, uh, environment to keep us, um, you know, going for it at, at a hundred miles an hour, you know? Totally, totally. And there's also, I feel like, a camaraderie amongst people who've also overcome struggle. It's like, you get it. I've been hungry. You've been hungry. Like, we got, it's like a rapport right For off sure. the bat, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I real recognizes real. Yeah. You know, I, I, as they say. So, you know, I, I you can tell um, somebody who, who's really, you know, pulled themselves up by, by their own bootstraps. And, um, you know, it, it's just interesting. I love even talking to people like that because, you know, so many interesting stories out there of people who have, you know, come from, from, from nothing and, 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 uh, you know, made it to, to the very top of the, to the very top of their industries and, and, and are living successful, um, lives, you know, where, and they didn't start off that way. And, yeah. uh, you know, you, you, you see these people and, uh, you know, you just can kind of almost recognize it in their eyes. You can see the drive and it's like, okay, you didn't, you didn't have anything handed to you. You had yeah. to earn it. And, and you can just see those people don't stop. Those True. People don't stop. You know, it's not like a, a place of just rest and relaxation and we're just cooling. No, it, it, it's such a it's such a mentality. Like, um, you know, it, it's it's interesting. Um, I, I remember watching the barbershop one time and, and my guy, LeBron, yeah. um, he was talking about Bill Belichick. And yeah. he was saying how Bill Belichick is not even um, it's not even about the success. He doesn't even uh, necessarily relish in the Super Bowl. It's the process. Oh. You know, he's got so acclimated and fallen in love so much with the process. And it's like people who come from, you know, these these uh, environments where you had to pull yourself up. We get addicted to the process. Oh, yeah. To the point where, you know, it's hard to stop. But, uh, you know, when he's talking about Bill Belichick, he was just saying how basically um, the the uh, uh, he he fell in love with the process. So, so, you know, it's not even that he's celebrating the Super Bowl. You know, they, they, they went to Super Bowl and cool. He's celebrating for like a day. Yeah. And then <laughs> the next day he's thinking about training camp for the next year because he's just so locked into that particular process. And, and, you know, I, I find it interesting to see, you know, people who, you know, pull themselves up that, in that, in that manner, um, you know, just, just have a process that they're sort of addicted to. It's just like, we, we got to keep pushing. Yeah. And like as actors, you kind of have to have that mentality because the job of an actor really is auditioning. And then you're rewarded with the role. They're like, oh, cool, I get to do this. But at the end of the shoot, you're fired. So you got to do it all over again. Yep. So you you have to find some love. Like if you if if auditioning is breaking you down, not the job for you. It man, just isn't. <laughs> oof, oof, man. I, I, yep. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if I could agree with you on that one, man. Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> listen, I, I am, I am. Uh, it takes me a couple auditions to get warm, even at this point. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. I, I still deal with nerves, and it, and it, it oh, doesn't even sure. make any sense to me. You know, because like it, it's so funny because you know I, I've grown so much over over the years and, and throughout my journey as a, as an actor and um you know I was very very intimidated when I first started getting into the bigger rooms and things of that nature and um I bet. you know was was even uh, intimidated by the material but as I started to to get better at it um you know the nerves still would be there though and and it started not to make sense to me and and I was actually explaining this to a friend of mine uh the other day um, I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Pavlov and his experiment with the dogs and the salivation uh, when it comes to the bell, but mm-hmm. you know, I, I'll, I'll briefly explain it. Uh, there was uh, a, a guy, a guy uh, I believe he's a scientist, his name was Pavlov, and uh, he had these dogs that 
basically what he would do is he would um, he would ring a bell at a certain time and uh, let the dogs out of their cage in order to eat this food. Right. And um, every day he would do it. And the dogs started to get conditioned to the point where they, when they would hear just the sound of the bell, their, their, their mouth would start salivating for the food. Oh. And uh, eventually he took the food away and he would ring the bell and the dogs would still salivate for the food. Sure. And um, even though there was no food there, their minds were just uh, uh, trained in that way. And um, I, I think that for me, I, I, I had a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, I, I say this sarcastically, but, you know, still in, in jest, uh, yeah. PTSD from uh, my early auditions and how bad they were oh, to the I point bet. where I was I, I was so nervous by the work that now, even though the work is so much more easy for me, mm -hmm. I'm so much more trained. Like, you know, I, I'll pick up an, uh, some audition sides, man. And you know, within that hour, I got I got everything already memorized. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I trained myself to that point to where you know I, I'm, I'm effective and efficient. However, that performance anxiety still still creeps up on me. You know, and for those first couple of auditions, and I, and I equate that to that Pavlov experiment. I'm just so conditioned to be nervous. Right, <laughs> right. You know, so so you know, when people are, are it, it can kind of stress you out and get to you. You know, it's still, and it's been years that I've been auditioning. Um, and, right. and you know, it still takes me a couple to get get warm. Now, when I, once I've gotten warm. You know, then it's like, all right, it's all, it's all good, and and we're we're back to the process, you know, and uh, sure. you know, it's just the work again. Um, but uh, yeah, that that took a lot to, for me to overcome, um, years and years for me to overcome that audition anxiety. You know, uh, I'm just just being able to really deal with that yeah. <laughs> at this point. You know, it's and it still takes me a couple to get to kind of get you know, into the flow of things. I'm like, you know, I hope my agents know, don't send me on. Right. If, if, look, I, I just got like, like, cause it's crazy because Boomerang, the, the schedule, the way it shoots, it's an interesting schedule for me as an actor because we shoot it. Uh, so it'll be like from October to December. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, they're not going to allow me to audition for anything. Um, you know, when we're talking about August and September, really, right. You know, they kind of shut me down. Sure. Because, you know, you, you can't have any conflicting obligations. you got to go shoot Boomerang. So it's like right. I kind of get shut down. So there's no auditions there. But that's cool, though, because I'm working. So, right. you know, exactly. you're still in the flow of it. You're, 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 you're working. You're on a character, which is great. But, you know, once that's done, let me see. We finished in, uh, you know, this, we finished in December. So we finished in December. There's there's nothing going on. Christmas is happening, you right. know, so you're not you're not working, you're not acting or anything like that. And then, um, you know, the, the beginning of the year is kind of nothing. But then pilot season starts, you know, toward the end of, of January. But then you have all these as a series regular all of these bands and and different things that you can and can't do right. you know so your auditions are a little limited so you get a sprinkle here and there but by that point you know it's already been like two three months you haven't acted <laughs> you know True. so now you're kind of cold you know and then, right. so you know that first one you get your back is kind of like oh man i'm nervous you know uh yeah. but then, you know after a couple you kind of for me anyway i get i i i calm into it and it's all good there you go do you find that you're able to like can you funnel it like if you've got the nerves can you like i have this thing i have this theory that like there's a point of no return right mm. for like everything yeah. so like mm -hmm. i i talk about if you can just force yourself to get to the point of no return you have to relinquish control because it's out of your control right mm. it's getting to the point of no return that's the struggle but then for once you're sure. there, you're like, I mean, I'm in the room now, so I got to do it. It's everything waiting for your name to be called and sitting in the room with eight other guys that look like you where you're like, oh, man. That's, that's oh, where man. the anxiety <laughs> is, man. That You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely right. That's I feel the same way. Yeah. Um, because, you know, even even when I'm when I'm nervous, um, you know, once I get in that room and once I've done that first take, I'm not nervous anymore. You know what I mean? Like you're you're you just you're now now you're in your go mode, you know, right. but it's like that anxiety all the way leading up, especially like, you know, I'm like, look, give me, give me a morning audition yeah. so that I don't have to deal with this anxiety until three o'clock. There you, know you go. I mean? <laughs> like, three o'clock in the afternoon. So you mean I, I woke up at seven 30 in the morning and I had to be nervous all day till three. That's torture. <laughs> don't do that to me. I tell my agents all the time, give me a morning audition. Don't play with me. Dog. Yeah. Right. I want to be but, half uh, asleep in that room. <laughs> right. You know, shoot. But uh, no, I, I and also too, I mean, what helps me to be honest with you is uh, CBD. Oh, you know, yeah. give me, yeah, give me some, uh, you know, some CBD because you know, um, it, there's no 
old THC, so I'm still uh, clear, clear minded when I go into the room. Right. Um, you know, and it, it's just uh, one of those calming agents that kind of helps me to, you know, focus without those nerves. Sure. You know, because uh, sometimes the nerves are just, you know, it's just a distraction. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, so that that helps a bit. And um, yeah, like you said, once you get into it, you just got to know, like, you know, these these nerves are temporary because once I get into it. Um, you know, I'm into it. And, and uh, this this fear right here is just an illusion. It's just me and the work right now. Sure. Are you good at letting it go when you walk out of the room? Absolutely. Yeah. Same. Absolutely. Same. Yeah. I, I don't I don't want to even think about it anymore because, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's interesting. You know, when I first started off acting um, the very, very beginning, I used to take auditions personally. Mm-hmm. Like, if I, I, you know, I'm checking back like, oh, yeah, oh, who got it? Who yeah. Got it? Oh, <laughs> yep. how come I didn't get it? What, what happened? You know? Yep. And it's like. Listen, I've been on thousands of auditions at this particular point. <laughs> There's no way I'm checking in on every single audition that you know I, I've, I've uh, you know didn't get. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it, it, you it, can't. Who knows why you didn't get it? You know what I mean. So like once once I once I leave it out there, I le- I left it out there. You know, I'm not I'm not thinking about it. I'm not think. You know, and even like you'll go to, now if if I think I made a terrible choice. Yeah, that might stick with me. Sure, you know, that that might be. I might be in the car, like, bro. Yeah, really? <laughs> you know what you, you did. Know? <laughs> yeah, and, and then and then you know, for maybe an hour or two, I'll I'll, I'll be like thinking about that one, and and I'll just kind of you know, I'm like, all right, well, cool. For next time, you know, you know what to do or what not to do. But you know, for the most part, man, you just gotta let that thing go. You yeah. do the work, you you put it out there, and then there's nothing you can do about it, man. Just keep it moving. I agree. I find the key is you have to do your best, and that's the only way you can sleep. Because if you did Absolutely. your best, there's nothing more you could have done because you did your best. Right. You know? Absolutely. It's like, well, I mean, you, you put it all out there. Is what it know? is. And it, it is what it is. You so spot on, man. Spot yeah. on. But it's and also like you cannot get the role for like anything. It's like oh, it's two inches too tall. Uh, you know, exactly, <laughs> like... <laughs> exactly. It had nothing to do with anything that you could control. Yep. You yeah. know, and a lot of times that's the case. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it, it's because art is is so it's so sub- subjective. I mean, yep. you know, it, listen, there's no right answer. True. There's no there's no best actor. You know what I mean? They're, you know, yeah, of course, you know, you have these award shows. Sometimes you have this clear cut person. That's, they're, they're, they're just a winner. Yeah. But, um, you know, for the most part, though, you can't tell me that this actor is a better actor than that person. Definitively. These are not facts. Right. So, you know, whatever reason that you didn't get chosen for, you can't really take it personally because it most of the time is out of your hands, especially if you're if you're you're at the level to where you're, you know, you're you're doing your best, but you're also functioning at a, at a high level. I mean, listen, you know, if if it's me versus the other actor and I'm just as talented and we're just as good, you know, it's going to come down to who just fits the role better. And yep. that's that has nothing to do with anything I can control. It's true. It's true. And then sometimes the casting directors don't even know what they want until it walks exactly. in the door. Yeah. Like, exactly. You know, I, I love going into those uh, any ethnicity um, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> calls because it's like, oh, OK, cool, cool, cool. You guys have no idea what, right, yeah. what, what you want. <laughs> so, you know, allow me. I go, yeah. You know, I, I definitely can't take this one personally. Yeah. <laughs> you know, then you look at it, you see it on TV and see it was somebody completely opposite your type. And you're like, see, yep. Right, right. <laughs> Makes me feel better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this now, is, this what, is a what, mixed what bag. really sucks, though, is if you watch TV, and this is a person that looks just like you. You're like, yeah. Hey, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, that one's tough. That one's tough. Yeah, that one hurt. That one hurt. All right, all right. Like, Respect that one. You're like pulling out measuring tape. Is he taller than me? Hold on. Right, Hold on. <laughs> right, right. Was, yeah, that's what it was. It's Hold on. Six, five. Yeah. yeah, that's what. Yeah, you can't teach six five. <laughs> that's right. It's you know, like I got boots. Dude. I got boots. Right. <laughs> right, guy looks just like you. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, man. So, when did your interest in acting start? Then, um, it started while I was working at Merrill Lynch. Oh, um, that's yeah, on my not way even to, close to art. Not even close. <laughs> yep, on my way to financial advisorhood. What? Uh, so, yeah, so I got a business degree. Um, Dude, uh, business, yeah, business management. Um, I never thought about acting before in my life. I played sports. Uh, all through high school, 
Um, you know, and uh, yeah, I got a I got a scholarship to uh, to school and uh, academically, and um, Take you that, know, Bob. I finished with it with it. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> finished uh, finished with it with it with a business degree, and uh, went to work for uh, Merrill Lynch. Um, started off, you know, entry level position. Um, and you know, th- that was like what you were supposed to do, you know, right. uh, you, 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 you go through high school, you go to college, you get your degree and what do you do? You get a job. And then the next thing you know, you, you're married, you got two kids, a picket fence and, and, and you're 65 and retired, you know, what yep. I mean? that's the life. Ugh. And, um, that's, that was the life I was headed toward. And, um, it depressed me, you know, yeah. it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't for me. <laughs> I hear, I'm depressed just uh, hearing about it. Yeah, yeah, I was just like, I was like, what is this? You know, this is this is not this. The the, the fire is not lit inside right. of me, um, being here. Uh, so I remember I, I went to uh, my mom's church one Sunday and uh, these two girls were like, hey, you're cute. You should do our fashion show. And I was like, oh. all right, I don't have anything else going on. Cool. I'll do it. There you go. So. You know, did the fashion show and I got so much attention and so much love. I was like, whoa, this is kind of cool. Yeah. Like people tell me, yo, you should model. You should. I was like, really? I can make some money doing this? That's cool. All right. Hell so yeah. I remember that week going to work and um, at lunchtime, I went to a deli and next door to the deli was a storefront. And in the storefront window, uh, it was a big old sign and, and lights that said casting. So I was like, oh, oh. That's, that's modeling. You know, I was like, All yeah. right, I can go in there and see what's going on. So I went in there and the lady was like, do you have any experience modeling or acting? I said, well, I just did a show last week. Yeah. And she was like, <laughs> nah, like I can't really help you and cast you in too much. But. She's like, you can come back Tuesday and Thursday nights and I'll give you lessons. I said, cool. Oh. I will be back with my $30 in hand to give you. There you and, go. Um, yeah, $30 lessons, man. You Dude. already know I wasn't learning anything. Yeah. <laughs> 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 she didn't give you the secret? <laughs> no, not quite. I didn't get the secret, but I fell in love, though. I fell there you in love. go. That's enough. And, um, you know, I, I, and at that point, um, you know, I, I started to, to pursue it as a hobby, started taking lessons out in Philadelphia. Then I booked, um, you know, a, a film out in Alaska, as a matter of fact. Of all what? Places. Yeah, uh, it was a film called Alaska Land. And um, actually, the director of that particular film, uh, Chinonye Chuku, um, uh, has just had a, a film come out called uh, Clemency. Um, you know, yeah. she just took to uh, Sundance, and uh, but she directed that particular film, and she cast me um, as Brandon in, in her film uh, Alaska Land, and I was only like five months into me acting. Dude, um, and uh, yeah, it was crazy. I know, right? And it, it was it, it was that was what really hooked me to acting. I mean, like like I said, I was working at Merrill Lynch. I had three weeks of vacation time um, for the whole for the whole year at Merrill Lynch, and uh, and the, the film would take uh, three years. Oh. Uh, f- I mean, I'm sorry, not three years. I'm sorry, my fault. Uh, three weeks. Three I kind of hope weeks. it's three years. years. <laughs> right. I know. Right. Exactly. Like, I got quit. I'm yeah. out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you just wrapped, but, uh, is what you're saying. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We're, we're never getting on set. But. Uh, <laughs> No, so it took three weeks, uh, three three weeks, uh, you know, for us to film. So I took all my vacation time um, for for the for that year or whatever, uh, and just went out to Alaska to film. Um, and Dude. I was like, "Whoa, this is amazing!" I mean, I'm out here in Alaska. You know, I'm looking at the Northern Lights. I'm oh, getting paid. Cool. Uh, you know, they put me up in a hotel and all of this because they like the way I play pretend. Yeah, this is crazy. There you go. <laughs> like, I just get to do. I just get to play pretend for all of this, and and then you know, I I remember going back to my cubicle, just being ready to like you know tip the stapler over and, and, and throw the paper clip <laughs> you down. You can't because go back. Just, ah, this <laughs> sucks. You know. So then, um, Bank of America bought Merrill Lynch uh, in, in a merger at that particular point, and um, I remember transferring over to Bank of America from there mm-hmm. because at that point I was hooked. I was an actor. Now you know, right. I'm not financial advisor. No, I don't. I don't want my series. <laughs> Seven or series 66 i don't need any of that i'm not dealing with anybody you've money. seen the northern I, lights exactly i've seen the northern lights all I'm, i know all i had to do is play pretend yeah so forget all these this other stuff yeah so uh um, <laughs> who needs math <laughs> exactly this is math stuff i don't even like this stuff anyway yeah. man i'm better with people this is stupid i already know i'm gonna fail that test like three times yeah it's crazy <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh you know um i transferred over to uh new york uh, Manhattan, New York, and um, like, I, like I was, I was still living in South Jersey, and um, I, I took an overnight position, um, working from eleven to six, eleven at night, Smart. six in the morning, and I would go it, it, to the train two hours up, and two hours back, 
and it would be it would be hell sometimes because when you had an audition in the daytime, let's say you know I set up an audition for maybe like three o'clock, three p.m. Yeah. So I get off at six, you know, and it's a two hour trip back to South Jersey. So I might not want to go back to South Jersey. You know what I mean? If it's like an early audition, uh, early afternoon audition type of thing. And then once you're finished with the audition, I mean, you know, you got to be back to work. So do you do you hop back on the train and, and go back home two hours back and then two hours back up to work. So like sometimes I'd be up just stuck in New York for days. Oh and, man. You know, it was it was it was a, a crazy experience, you know, um studying for roles out there, not uh get not catching the train in time. So you gotta try to catch some sleep in the train station like you were homeless and then having people uh tap you on the shoulder like, hey you can't sleep here. Oh yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, off of this acting dream, you know? Right, right. <laughs> Are you homeless? No, I'm an actor. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go get <laughs> to exactly. me, it's the same thing. <laughs> same thing. There's no difference. <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. Your first, your first movie on location, which is bonkers. Usually, mm-hmm. a lot of your first movies is like at a buddy's house. That's like you know down the street. Exactly. Like, okay, but Alaska was it cool? I've always wanted to go to Alaska. Um, it was great. It was great. It was a uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. Um, oh. you know, like I said, the Northern Lights out there was was, was uh, tremendous. Dude. Um, you know, there was uh the Dasani Mountains out there. They had uh the natural hot springs that you know um, I was able to go to, what? and uh, but it was cold as hell though. It was I super bet. cold. We went out there in uh, uh, I believe it was March. It was like March of 2011. Mm-hmm. And um, you know it was super cold. I mean, you know, it's like your your, your lips are quivering, and then they say act, they say action. You have to act like you're not cold. And it's yeah. like, uh, <laughs> you know, this is acting, the real acting. job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the real job is to act like I'm not cold. Forget all this emotion you want. <laughs> yeah, for real. Did, was yeah. it one of those times? Because I've heard that like half the year it's like there's no dark at all. The next year it's like next. Yeah, year exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, you know, six months off and six months on. And it was interesting too, kind of seeing the transition because it was happening rapidly, um, you know, switching from uh, a dark period to a light period, I believe. Um, you know, uh-huh. so it was it was kind of like the days where we're, we're starting to extend um, a little longer every day. And it was just interesting to see that. Sure. And I feel yeah. like seeing something like the Northern Lights, like how can you not be changed just experiencing something like that because i don't know i feel like our human brains are like whoa you know yeah no it was incredible it was incredible man seeing all of those uh colors in the in the in the sky uh you know like i I had never seen anything like that before in in my life and it was just a really really cool experience so you know when you get to experience these types of things and and it's, it's not a vacation that i paid for Right. It was a paid vacation that I get to play pretend for. And I, and I actually have a lot of fun playing pretend. So, like, all the way around, it was a whole win. It's just a win-win. You know, win. It was a win-win, man. I, and I mean, like, you know, that was that was my first, like, um, uh, uh, you know, feature independent film production. But actually, I, I did a, a, a school production before that, um, you know, it, which was, like, my first, very, very first thing ever. And and that was so interesting because it was just like like kind of how you described it was you know um, we we did it was a short film for for this director for Temple University out of Philadelphia mm-hmm. and um, you know we were we were on on the block in Philadelphia and uh, I was supposed to play uh, this this drug dealer uh, name yeah yeah I was supposed to play this this drug dealer and uh, what I didn't know was th- that he actually had me the actor. Um, playing with the extras who were actual drug dealers oh, and no. were selling actual drugs <laughs> where we were acting. So <laughs> it was quite interesting when actual like drug transactions were happening while yeah. we were supposed to be filming. Like I remember it was funny as ever because we're doing the scene or what have you and the guy comes up to get his drugs and I'm being all tough and telling him, you know, you know, here, take this and get get going. And then while we're in the middle of the scene, this other guy comes up who's not in the scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's and business he, as usual. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And he walks up to the real drug dealer. He's like, yo, man, let me get an eight ball. The drug dealer's like, yo, man, hey, you see all these cameras, man? 
You see all these cameras? You see I'm doing something right now? He said, yo, yo, back up real quick. Back up real quick. Let me finish this and I'll serve you. Be there in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it's, then, then I'm sitting there looking like looking at the director like, so is that is that cut? Like, yeah, exactly. Does that does that count? You, are we, are you know, we, those, we, these are real drugs we're doing already. Like, should, right. we, should we just get them in? <laughs> you know, so then the director yelled cut, and, and he went over there and and gave the fiend, uh, you know, they gave the, the gave him some some drugs, and uh, they did their little transaction, right. and uh, he got back to work. That's he got hilarious. back to work, and I was like, "See, all right, we we can't be doing this for too much longer because yeah. I don't want to go to jail. Yeah. I came here to act, uh, yeah. and I'm going to end up in the back of a cop car. This is not cool. That's right. You don't want to be yeah. filming when a real cop shows up. Not <laughs> right. Exactly. He's not going to think, oh, he's the actor. No, right. I'm going to jail too. I'm not doing this anymore. That's I quit. Hilarious. <laughs> it's, see, you're in a lose lose situation because you're acting so well that they're like, you're not a get in here. Get, yes, exactly. you are. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and it's not like I have my certificate from Juilliard that I could show them. Yeah, either, so, exactly. Yeah. You know. <laughs> It's fake. Look, it's I fake. go to work on Monday at Merrill Lynch, man. I'm telling you, I'm I'm a good guy. That's right. They're like even more criminal. Get your head. <laughs> exactly. Like, look, there's sugar in my bag. I don't know what's in it, but mine is sugar. That's right. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I love the guy. It's like his day job interfered with the shoot for a second. He's like, yeah, exactly. Me. I'm fake dealing right now. I'll real deal in a minute. All right. <laughs> man, for real. Like, no, it was, a, it was a real, it was like a real drug transaction, man. That was taking place. Like they had the fake drugs and they had the real drugs. Um, you know, it, yeah, it was, it was crazy. That's but, so um, you know, yeah. So, so Alaska Land was definitely my first, like, you know, that was got me hooked. But before that, I did that, that, that one school <laughs> thing. And it was kind of interesting. I don't know if, if that would have been my last experience. It, you know, uh, if Last Land didn't happen, that might have been my last experience. Because I was like, man, this stuff is kind of crazy. Right, right. Yeah. I didn't yeah. realize you guys were so method. I mean, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, right? <laughs> Selling real drugs. Wow. Yeah. Eesh. That's so funny. So if you were, if you're in Merrill Lynch, you're doing financial advisors, are you good at math? Um, I'm fairly decent at math. Okay. Uh, I'm fairly decent. I mean, I was, I was, you know, joking when I said, uh, you know, I probably failed a test a couple of times. Um, you know, I, I, I'm fairly decent at math. Um, you know, I, I've, I've more, I've always been more of the language arts type of student though. Yeah. Same. You know, um, you know, I, I'm very, very good at, uh, you know, uh, reading comprehension. I, I guess you could say, you could say like, uh, you yeah. know, I've always been the type that, formulated good opinions uh when i was in school after after reading what the what the teacher wanted to give and you know starting starting up uh dialogue and, yeah uh, you know it's more <laughs> I, of a i like a the words person. you're using leland <laughs> yeah exactly. starting dialogue uh-huh there you go I hear you. exactly i'm picking so up at I, your land down <laughs> I, i'm sure you can relate I, yeah. I'm, I'm positive of it you know yeah. so um <laughs> You know, the, the Merrill Lynch thing for me was more like I knew once I passed the math that I would be great when it came to the people. Right. And that's where I would make make my money, you know, because ultimately, you know, when you're talking about stocks and things of that nature and licenses, you know, ultimately, you know, you can do all the math you want. But if you're not good with people, um, it's it's going to be it's going to be tough to get the business. That's so, true. I love know. that there's like this underlying thing that you had in you all along that kind of fueled. It's like you were always meant to be an actor so much so that like you're sitting and having lunch after a random fashion show and the lights are blinking like in a movie. <laughs> right. You know? Right. Right. Ex exactly. Exactly. It was like it was like God was just opening up heaven. It was like, oh, yeah, exactly. You know? Leland, get yeah. out of the banking industry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Come act. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, OK, exactly. OK. And then you do your first job. You're like, drugs? Is this? And you, don't worry right. about it. <laughs> right, 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 right. I, I have just other plans. Yeah. <laughs> this is the molding part. This is the iron sharpens iron. Don't hey, worry. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. There yeah, it, it's been a it's been a tremendous journey though. I mean, you know, from starting off at uh, Merrill Lynch and and not ever even thinking about acting before to uh, just suddenly developing this passion that I mean caused me to you know travel two four hours a day. Um, you know, yeah. just to begin my, my career. And, and then, um, you know, ultimately I did, I mean, shoot, you know, I, it, it's funny. I, I used to be embarrassed about this, but, but not anymore. I did, um, um, 
you know how the the FDA has to do human testing on different drugs before they can actually put it out there on the market for the regular you know con- consumer oh, uh, yes. or what have you. And uh, you know, I was I, look in order to to get my my you know my money up in 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 Los Angeles and be able to you know have a, a, a sufficient stack to move out here. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I did uh I did some of those 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 human testing. Yeah, <laughs> you did know you, what I do mean. Do you have any yeah. bad tests? Uh, no, no. Luckily, That's good. You know, I'm not, I, I never, you know, turned green and started glowing or anything yeah, right. like that. But, <laughs> you can uh, hide your third arm now, so that's good. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it only grows out of my neck at night. So yeah. <laughs> no you night know? shoots. It's exactly. in the contract. <laughs> exactly. And it's only the size of like a nub pinky, so it's okay. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. I <laughs> yeah, can see it. exactly. You know, for sure. <laughs> a little makeup would good. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> yeah, you know, he, he hasn't started talking yet, so it's yeah, okay. Yeah, give it time. Give it time. I got, yeah, I'm trying exactly. to warm up. I'm actually wanting to talk to him more than you, if I'm being honest. I, I, yeah. I know. Trust you get me, it. Trust me. He, he has a lot to say. He yeah. to say. <laughs> He's seen you know? drug deals. He's seen all kinds of stuff. It's oh, crazy. man. <laughs> I'm telling you, he knows where all the bodies yeah. are. Buried. It's crazy. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you know, I, I, I pretty much I was so dedicated that it was whatever it took, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, I packed up all my stuff from Jersey, threw it in the car. Drove on out here to drove on out here to Los Angeles, man, and uh, you know just started from scratch. I had no no um, you know particular uh, uh, you know uh, conservatory training or anything like that. You know I had to I, I pretty much learned how to act when I when I moved out here to Los Angeles because when I was in New York, you know I was and it's just interesting too because if I could give myself any advice to start, it would be to be more patient and train right, right. away. You know, but for me it was just like. I want to go, 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 go. And I just have all this ambition. And I thought I was a whole lot better than I was yeah. <laughs> you know, when I first started off, you know. Sounds so right. um, I, I didn't necessarily uh, go straight for the training. Um, I went straight to try to producing a reel so I could get an agent. And, and yep. you know, I see a lot of actors doing the same thing. They're just ready to go. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean, they start acting and it's just like, oh, man, I got to get footage. I got to get a reel. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Because they see all these like Instagram sensations and things of that nature. And they think that they're just going to be a, a personality and people just going to love them because of their natural charisma. And I mean, you know, there are a few that break through like that. But for the most part, uh, a lot of the actors that you see on television grinded and and actually, you know, work their way up there um you know uh, oh, a lot yeah. of the traditional way you know and and have skill you know what i mean you have those people that yeah they've come from other industries and and have made it as actors and of course but um if you if your your talent is to act you should be a trained actor absolutely you know um so for me to start off like i was just so ambitious that i i, I was impatient with the process um you know so i wasn't necessarily thinking about uh, 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 training. It was all about getting the real footage and getting out there and all the rest. And that's what I think hurt me, you know, when I first started getting into these audition rooms, because it was like, oh, you know, you have this charisma and, and, and this look, but at the same time, you're not trained. And it's right. very apparent now when you, you get into <laughs> these big rooms and you're competing on this bigger stage um, that what you have is not enough. You need to go back and train. And then that was at that point that I really started to go and to uh, take classes out here in Los Angeles. Because then at that point, too, my life was a little more stable. I started working nights uh, at, at a group home um, called Penny Lane. Um, oh, right you on. know, so I, I would work overnights, uh, you know, with the kids and during the day, uh, was when I was able to, you know, take my classes and go to my auditions. And, and then, you know, as the years went on then I started to pr- perfect my craft, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it, I'm still putting in my 10,000 hours like that, that training oh, yeah. is, you know, but, um, you know, I'm in a much more comfortable space than I am to do it. in. <laughs> sure. Sure. It is yeah. kind of crazy that, like, you're absolutely right. Like, I even know a lot of people like that. It's like, oh, it's, it's about the real. It's about the real. It's like, but also it isn't. Like, it's it's a job right. that you need to be technically savvy to do. And there's so absolutely. many, like, intricacies that you would not figure out on your own. Absolutely. You know? and, and it's like, you know, you're so you're so ready to put out this reel, um, you know, and, and the thing about it is the work looks like these are like family videos. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, this is not quality that you're putting out here. You don't look good. And and that's the thing. Like, you're, you're just so in a rush to make a presentation that you don't care what this presentation looks like or, or not that you don't care what this presentation looks like. You're not taking into account. 
right. what this presentation looks like because um, you know, a lot of people think that they're when they first starting off that they're just the best thing since sliced bread. And, and uh, you yep. know, when they start sending these reels out, that's what happened to me. You know, I started sending my quote unquote reel out to, uh, <laughs> you know, agents out here in Los Angeles when I first moved out here. Yeah. And uh, I was getting no responses. And I was like, what what is going on? You know, it, it's so funny <laughs> because I remember when I first moved here uh, to L.A., a guy told me uh, he was like, you know, everybody comes here from their hometown. And uh, you know they're they're like the the best thing ever. They're 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 like the the hot they're the hot new thing. You know what I mean? They're 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 like the lava. They're, yeah. You know what I mean? But he was like, you're 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 hot and you're lava out there in your hometown. But then when you come to L.A., you're just another cinder in hell. Yeah. That's, like you're, that's a you're good way of, to put it. Yeah, you're one of many. Like, what makes you the pink elephant? Sure. You know? Usually that's skill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, can you do the job, bro? That'll that'll literally slice your competition in half. It's you know, true. And, and people are going thinking that all they got to do is just put out this material, get these reels, and that they're going to get agents. And what they don't realize is that to the agent, they're the agent is clear, and they they've been in this this industry for long enough to tell. Oh, okay. This person's not going to work for a while. Yep. Do I want to deal with this person? Um, because I'm going to have to develop them. Because that's right. what had to happen with me. Really? And um, my agency, yeah, my first agency first took me on. They were like, "Well, we're going to have to develop you." You know, we see the charisma and all that, but um, you know, you don't have the skill. And, and you know, they started telling me, "Hey, these are some classes you need to go to." And blah, blah, blah. And I started taking the, you know, those steps to 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 do that and develop because um, you know, they saw the 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 raw talent and the ambition, but the skill wasn't there. And I remember um. You know, I went to my first uh, audition. It was for a, a pilot on ABC that's no longer on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, the the casting director got back to my agent. He was he was like, it, it, it was a good read, but he was just so nervous. Yeah, was like <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't cast him. Like you know, and they were like, yeah, he was like, hey, you know, maybe he should, uh, you know, take some of these audition classes and and you know, just starting that whole process of uh, because it was like starting over again. Like yeah, I did all that to get out here. And I was doing all the sacrifice as far as like my work and, and everything of that nature. But that was me just trying to get real footage and trying to get stuff kind of, you know, independently, non-union stuff and, yeah, and all the sure. rest. And, uh, you know, nothing wrong with non-union stuff or anything like that. But I, what I'm saying is my uh, my approach was not to train. It was just to go out there and just get footage. And right. um, ultimately, you know, I felt like when I got to L.A., I had to start over because then I realized, hey, Lee, you know, you're not that good yet. You got to yeah. <laughs> you might want to train. And then that's what kind of started me on my journey <clears throat> as far as my 10,000 hours and, and becoming a master craftsman. Sure. I mean, that's <clears> smart. <throat> and also, I think something an interesting headspace is like everyone outside of like Atlanta or Los Angeles, where it's like the thing is there. Right. Where you mm -hmm. are, where you come from. You might be an actor, but you're surrounded by not actors. Absolutely. So you shine so much better. You're like, oh, I can act and yes. I can do all those things. But then yes. when you jump into the ring with other actors, you're like, oh, training. Right. You, listen, you. <laughs> I thought I was amazing yeah. because when I went to acting class, listen, Betty the soccer mom yeah. was not was not on my level, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Betty the soccer mom was not on my level, bro. Right. Look, I was over here like slam dunking on these people. They coming from, <laughs> you know, it's coming from your know, just regular job. This is just a hobby for them. You know? Right. This guy is a lawyer. He does not care about acting class, dog. Yeah. Like, but I'm over here giving them the business like, oh man, I'm the next Denzel. Right. But then when I got to LA, everybody was trained and they was like, oh. Right. Okay. <laughs> then you go I into Denzel's only... town and you're like, right. Oh. You know, I was in the kiddie pool thinking that I was doing something <laughs> something you know yeah. not quite bro not quite that is hilarious <laughs> <laughs> hard lessons to learn hard and especially Absolutely. if you've got like your reel and you think it's oh check this out boom and you're like man. oh man what especially look they put that they put that little fade effect on my reel yeah what? i'm faded <laughs> in and out i look amazing oh, it's Trust on. Me, you can't tell me nothing yep Yep, yep. Yeah. Been there. Been there. <laughs> I, I remember my first gig, it it was a pilot that was awful. Um, mm. but like I was in the background and like my yeah. my back was featured and I was like, Look at that. 
Wow. Uh, I'm going to show everybody like that's, yes. that's you can't see it cuz all the smoke but <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's the stars back right there. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, and then it's so years crazy. later you're like what is what is wrong with me? <laughs> oh man, but that goes to people's heads. I, oh yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it so much like you know it's funny like I I follow some of my actor friends on on Instagram like you know the actors that that are still just kind of starting off and getting going and and things of that nature and they'll be like, "Yeah, you know I was on set with I was on set with Tom Cruise the other day and yeah. you know we were just kicking it and blah 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 and then you know you'll see it come out and you'll see like they were they were the extra in the back just kind of like just jamming while Tom yep. Cruise was like you know <laughs> doing all types of stunts off the ceiling and it was just like so interesting how that goes to everybody's head yeah you know, I was like yeah I was on set man yeah exactly <laughs> I saw him that's what's up <laughs> right yeah it's nothing nothing big you know just another day at the office yeah me and, me, me and the rock you know yeah exactly Oh my god, it's such a funny business. And how, <laughs> how it goes. So from Alaska Land, correct me if mm-hmm. I'm wrong, was that when you went into Fall into Me? Um, so no, let me see. Uh Alaska Land and there was a few uh projects uh that that actually during that that little bit of a time in uh New York, New Jersey or what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I did a little self production, you know, uh, oh, a couple sweet. shorts and and some independent stuff that Smart. you know, like I said, I was looking for real footage. So, you know, I got uh, you know, I'm still savvy in a way, so got in touch with some directors and things of that nature on the East Coast and tried to put some things together. Yeah. And um, you know, so I was doing that 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 type of stuff. And then when I moved to uh LA so like cuz Alaska Land was literally we shot that in 2011. I didn't shoot uh Fall Into Me until 2015. Right. Um, Kept so grinding. it was about 4 years of uh figuring this thing out. Then you know that whole situation that I was just explaining as far as you know working and then moving to LA and getting acclimated. So yep. finally got acclimated, you know, started <clears throat> um um and then uh you know training and all that good stuff and then uh Fall Into Me happened. There you, um, go. you know, that's when I that's when I book fall into me, um, the rookie. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. That was a cool that was a cool little experience, you know. Um, I you bet. know, having a Cosmopolitan cross produce, uh, uh, well, cross promote um, the the lifetime produce thing, and it was you know that was when um, you know the internet. The, the web series were kind of just starting to people were really starting to catch hold of them, you know, um, right. the, the infancy stages of it, you know, web series nowadays, of you know, it, it's it's a real thing yeah. for sure, you know, um, yeah, very, very, very real. I mean, you know, YouTube, TV, I mean, all type, you know, people oh, are yeah. just doing all types of stuff. Content is getting bought like crazy. And that's, you know, it, and it's a great time for creators right now, for sure. Um, but uh you know that was lifetime produced that and that was uh you know right when um the 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 web series was just starting to get cooking so uh you know it was a dope dope experience you know we shot in the uh scientology center in uh in, oh, what? In, in hollywood yeah it was crazy everybody was like don't drink the kool-aid don't drink the yeah. kool-aid and i was just <laughs> you're like, not clear don't go clear <laughs> Yeah, I was like, man, I don't even know what any of that means, bro. I'm just, I'm just trying to play a baseball player. Yeah, like, you know. <laughs> so like, like, shoot, speaking of Tom Cruise, right? Like, yeah. How, <laughs> what a great segue, huh? That's right. That's right. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> you're right. Brilliant. Brilliant. Did you? Did you? Did they ask you if you could play baseball, or you're like, I could play it on TV? Wink, wink, wink. Yes, I, I, that is absolutely how that went. Yeah. They say, "Hey, can, can you play baseball?" And I was like, "Man, I'm so good at it." And then, <laughs> and then when they got out there, they were like, "Okay, yeah, right, we're gonna have to edit this." <laughs> yeah, like, choke up on the bat. What? Right? They were like, "They were like, look, man, just throw the ball up and hit it." And I was like, yeah. "All right." Oh no! Ooh. I remember. I remember one time, like uh, uh, my 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 co lead, she uh, rose. She she they threw the ball at her. She hit it. And that thing started coming directly at my face. <laughs> I swear, I was like, I, I my whole life flashed in front of my face. <laughs> I had a whole conversation with myself, with God, with, yeah. with, with Mother Nature, with all of that, in the midst of watching that thing fly towards my face. And I said, God, if you would just save my acting career right here and now, it hasn't even started. But this ball is coming so fast. <laughs> Please, God. <laughs> Goes in slow motion. You're wondering. I, I, about... <laughs> I will never lie to anybody ever again about what skills I have on my resume. Yeah. I promise you. Do not let this hit my face. <laughs> like, what are the statute of limitations? <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, I was just trying to act, man. You right. 
<laughs> I can act like a great baseball player. I promise you, I never played a day in my life. No, actually, I take that back. I played two weeks in sixth grade. There you go. Yep. That counts. And, you know, and it, we were in like we were talking about the poor and, and those those areas to where you don't have all the equipment. Yeah, right. We were putting down little uh, uh, pads from the, from under carpet. There you um, go for bases. And I remember I went to steal second base. And I didn't know how to slide yet, so I put my I, I, I put my right foot out there, and my left foot didn't follow all the way, <laughs> and, and and my right foot hit the base, and I did a full complete split. Oh no! <laughs> and the coach was like, "Hey man, you are gonna have to get used to that." I said, "No, you are gonna have to get used to this." And I just walked my ass home, <laughs> and I never came back. <laughs> you just, well, I did that. <laughs> yep, that was it. You sound bad to get used to what? No, I'm playing basketball. Forget you. That is hilarious. You're like, mm, yeah. I don't see many splits in basketball. And that yeah, was <laughs> no, 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 man. You know, shoes and hardwood, dude. I'm good with that. There you go. There you go. Yep. I dig it. I dig it. I mean, it came in handy. You played a baseball player, so. I, I did think... play a baseball player. Came full you know, circle. It came in handy for the role. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so I, I told them of how great of a baseball player I was, and somehow it, it worked, and I got the role, and. You know, it was cool. It was cool. I I, I like the experience on that set. I got to work with some really good people. Yeah, it's a great role too. I mean, it's a leading role, so well done. Yeah, absolutely. That's my that was my first uh, leading role, and that was um you know very very early on in my journey. Yeah, hell yeah, and in L.A. So, dude, right, killing right. it, killing it right out yeah. the gate. And then I know mm-hmm. you worked on Cinderella Christmas. Yes, another yeah, Cinderella great Christmas role with, where you uh, killed it. Tosca Tosca Musk, um, yeah, which is the sister of uh, Elon Musk. So cool, Ooh, you know. So we we had uh, Teslas on set, which was kind of cool. Oh, sweet, you know. Um, but uh, you know, she's doing her thing with all those passion flicks and got her own like line of movies. I mean, she's yeah, uh, she's, she's doing, an incredible she's hustler. Running. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, for sure, for sure. She's 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 hustling for sure. Um, and that was a cool cool uh you know experience too. Um, you know that movie actually plays still to this day every year uh, around Christmas time on go. Ion TV. Yeah, and and it's cool too because like certain around that time it plays like all over the world. So like you know people will send me DMs and Instagram for uh, uh um you know when they'll see it in like France and it'll be so funny because like I'll see my face and I'm talking and like somebody speaking French oh, yeah. while I while, while I guess I'm like lip syncing it. Yeah, you're it's clearly not my voice. Yeah, definitely dubbed and. Uh, that's you know, amazing. it's just kind of cool seeing that, and and I get my little, uh, you know, my 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 little little residual check, you know, you every now and again from it, you know. So I'm not mad at it. Yeah, there you go. And those are like really fun roles. I find is like when you get to play the best friend. That's kind of yes. like the conscious, the conscience of the thing, you know. It's yes, like, I was Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, you, know, you were. I was, yeah, I was on his shoulder. You know what I mean? Hey, I'm the I'm the wise black guy. I'm yeah, the there you go. You know, <laughs> <laughs> just hey, don't do that. Yeah, hey, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Listen, I know what's in your heart, all right? Just go for it. Actually, don't go for it. Yeah. Right, right, yep. right, right, right. Yeah, it's got to be so fun. And then, you, dude, you're on Boomerang. Again, yes. huge, huge. Yeah. Because, I mean, based on an Eddie Murphy movie, which right. is hilarious. Man, like, when incredible. when I when I heard they're making a Boomerang series, I immediately think of that clip uh, with John Witherspoon when he's like, you got to coordinate. You gotta coordinate. You, know? you gotta coordinate. You, <laughs> you know, know? He's like, I, I know you see the mushroom belt. Now check this right. out. You got the belt. <gasps> Do you see he's got the mushroom thing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> coordinate. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you gotta coordinate. You get it. Now, now, now Marcus, I heard, I heard, I heard a woman had you pussy with. Yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta reverse it. You gotta whip that pussy. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. So when you're coming yeah, on man. to something like that, I mean, speaking of nerves for auditions. There's no way you didn't have a ton of them for this. Oh my god, I did. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it was ridiculous. How the nerves were were, were crazy. Um, you know, it, it it's funny because like I'm just like this was divine appointment. I feel like to be yeah. honest with you because um, when when I went in uh, initially for the audition uh, at, at Lauren Gray casting, you know, like my resume wasn't too extensive before this. I mean, you know, I've done a few things or what have you, but it wasn't super extensive, you know, compared to a lot of the people who have been working for years and years in Hollywood. Um, right. You know, so a lot of times I would feel like when I would go into the rooms, you know, part of part of a little bit of PTSD, you know, and I say that facetiously, of course, yeah, of course. Um, that, that, I, that I had uh, when I would go into the rooms was because, you know, you just didn't get the time. 
Um, right. They didn't. They, they don't give you the time of day when you don't have that type of resume. Yep. You know, you'll, you'll go into the room and they're not even halfway paying attention, man. They're like, yeah, right, I know. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm waiting for the two o'clock off. You know, uh, I wait for the two o'clock to come through. Yeah. Um, you know, who, ha- who the name, you know, when the, when the names come through, you know, not spending time on you thinking about you. So you got really like it's like a balance beam effect because, you know, with, with no with no uh, safety net at the bottom, because if you mess up on your first take. You know, you don't get it all the way, and then they, you know, like, hey, can I do that again? Yeah. No, no, nope. thank you. You know, but but it was good. Thank you. Bye. You know what I mean? You know, you're not gonna hear from nobody, and you do that over a bunch of times. You like, man. Yeah. You get a little discouraged, you know. But um, Lauren Gray, man, they uh, they were they were so cool because they took their time with me. Oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? They they really took their time with me. They allowed me, um, you know, takes. And, uh, you know, even time to just warm up into it. So, you know, that first take, of course, I was nervous. But like, you know, like we talked about a little earlier, um, you know, once you're in it, you're in it. So by that second take and I, once I saw that we were working together yeah, in the, in the audition room, oh, I wasn't nervous anymore. Right. I was like, oh, OK, cool. She she actually wants me to win. Right. OK. But it's OK. okay. Yeah. 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 Let me go ahead and, 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 and really, uh, you know, impress her. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we went through several, several different takes and, um, you know, it was just a really great experience in that audition room and, uh, kind of calmed me for that one. Um, but also, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't believe I was going to get this role if I'm honest with you. Sure. You know, um, it was series regular. And, uh, like I said, you know, I, I, I didn't have an extensive resume at that point. I hadn't even had a guest star yet. Right. You know, um, you know, so I was like, look, I'm just going to go in here and impress somebody. and Hopefully I can get on this show. Right. You know, maybe get a guest star on the show or something like that. But I know they're going to give this role to a name, somebody who's out there and people know, you know, so I wasn't necessarily banking on getting it. I was just kind of like, whatever, this is this is kind of just my opportunity to do something good. So um, then they called me back and I was like, oh, Ooh. OK, all right, whatever. Cool. You know, yeah. Um, went in and uh, and did my thing again, and um, you know, I was. It was a good audition. You know, it like like I I, I get nervous, but I still I still do the work. You right. know what I mean? Like still, I still, still, yeah, still perform. So um, they liked it. They liked it, and um, then they called me back again, and I said, "Oh, they really think about like this is know. real." Yeah, because this is the producer session now. So now. You know, everybody's in the room. Everybody is 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 there, what have you, you know. And um, then they had, uh, and, and for me, I guess, you know, like I said, it's divine appointment because I guess God left me let let me off the hook because I didn't yeah. have to even go and do the chemistry read. Oh, really? The test. They just sent my audition tape to, uh, you know, Paramount and what have you as far as, like, the test and all of that. Like, they had already, wow. you know, chosen me for the character, so I didn't have to do all of that, which was a sigh of relief for me because, yeah. you know, I'll... I, listen, uh, when I get on set, I'm never nervous. Ever. Right. Because you got like it. I got the job. You know what I mean? Like I can go in and I can get just I can get cre- as creative as I want to with it. And I can, you know, it, it's an all collaborative effort. We're all working together. I know I'm going to get it. In the audition room, I think, you know, just the lack of consideration in the beginning to where, you know, I felt like it was thank you next. Right. You know, and all that preparation, you kind of feel like, damn, I just put three days into preparing for this audition and then I got one take and then I mess up and then, you you know, yeah. that's it. You know, that caused a little bit of anxiety. So, um, you know, when I'm on set, it's different for me. Um, but, uh, you know, at that with that being such high stakes and testing the chemistry read, I was kind of glad that they were like, look, we already chose you. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> you I'm, know? I'm pretty tired. <laughs> yeah. Cause that would have been, that would have been, a, oh, I'd have been so stressed, yo. Know? Like, I, I just, you know, so, you know, they, they put me on and then, um, you know, getting to, uh, to, to, to do the role and get into that, that particular skin. Yeah. Um, and it's been a blessing just the, the journey itself being able to play this role. I bet. It's a great role. I, I I love characters like Ari because they have this like it like breaks the mold, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like because you can be with him, you can be both vulnerable but also a badass. And right. I I love those kind of characters that have that sort of dynamic because a lot of them For can sure. be especially when tackling like sexuality, it can very quickly become a caricature. For but sure. then you're like like one of my all-time favorite TV characters is uh Lafayette from True Blood. Nelson okay. Ellis, yeah. dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he's yeah. incredible, incredible. I know. And like, he's great. I feel like Ari has those kind of sensibilities as well. Where you're like, he, there's so many layers to him that make him a real person. 
Right. And, I, and I mean, you kill it. It's Thank no, you. It, you do. Thank it's, you. It's incredible. Incredible works. Like you also, I find you can do comedy and drama very well where i feel like a I lot of people that. they have one that they like slightly are better than the other you know because you kind right. of workshop but you mm-hmm. you you kill it consistently so well done on that thank you thank you i really appreciate that i i mean yeah it's 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 been a uh just a blessing to to be able to delve into this particular character i mean it's 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 surely a challenge i mean you know me personally i'm you know heterosexual male right. so you know playing playing you know kind of against my own natural sexuality is, is is a bit of a challenge in a way I bet. you know but at the same time it, it's like Ari is such an interesting dynamic of a character because, um, you know, while there's a lot of, you know, comic relief and things of that nature, there's still that serious side of it. And, you know, given the climate of our society and, and you know, just <clears throat> within uh, our society, what the traditional norms are of, you know, what sexuality is and what people are consistently seeing, I, I, I feel that, you know, kind of a, a little bit of a responsibility of mine to, you know, present Ari as an authentic person, yeah. you know, to, to, you know, to show the life of a, a, a bisexual uh, man, you know, in a very authentic way to where people can, you know, relate and fall in love with them, yeah. you know, um, you know and, and I, I feel like, you know, just uh, that's my... I guess, duty, you know, within this role uh, as, you know, being chosen for it. You know, I just want to represent with as much authenticity as possible, you know, and um, show all the sides of a person because, you know, we're not just linear. You know, we, we don't just cry all the time. You oh, know, yeah. we, we laugh and we joke and, and you know, we're, we're, we're serious and then we're, we're angry and we're, it's just, uh, you know, it's so it's so funny because. To one person, you could be a scoundrel. To another person, you could be a saint. Yeah. And it just depends on who that person is to you and, and how that person, you know, what situation they caught you in or what have you. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, so many different sides to a personality. And I love as an actor that through Ari, I get to express that. I mean, the writers give me alley-oops, you know, yeah. as far as the the the, uh, the the jokes and the serious nature. And, you know, of course, I had my... My, my my spark to it and and um you know they they allow improv and and all that good stuff um you know but just collaborative uh lee the way that ari comes out i mean I, I i love being able to play him in all the sides that they give me to play him you know yeah with. for sure and working with lena i mean come on oh man come on she's incredible she's incredible like we we went on instagram i went on instagram live yesterday with lena and you know, then Snoop Dogg came and 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 and, and was talking in the conversation. I was like, "Is this life? Yeah, <laughs> it's real life right now." Like no I'm deal. literally having a conversation with Lena Waithe, and then and then she's like, "Oh, Snoop Dogg wasn't chime in on what we're talking about." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> then Snoop comes and talks, and I'm like, "This is crazy." Yeah, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> right, Snoop. Yeah, Snoop. Right. So, like, you know, I mean. Dude. Incredible. Lena Waif is, is is incredible. I mean, the best boss um you could ever ask for, just as far as support. I bet. You know, as far as you know, I mean, she's 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 cool. She's understanding. I mean, you know what I mean? Like she's uh she's just a, a really, really dope individual, even outside of the art itself. You know what I mean? So yeah, you know, it's it's a blessing to be able to have someone that, you know, I feel like will hear me out if I ever had an issue. Sure. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, it's just been a great uh, collaborative effort. Everything has just been been really, really smooth. Um, you know, they understand the actor. Um, we all, you know, play oppositions. And, um, you know, right now it's all coming to life in a great way. That's so cool. She made uh, The Shy, which is one of my all time favorite shows ever. It's yeah, yeah. so yeah. good. It's so good. Yeah. She just she can, she can do it all wrong. She needs to, yeah, she, man. She needs she's, to tone it down, it. you know, because, man. Too talented. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's kicking ass right now, man. She's kick- I mean, like, you know, you think about the life of Lena Waithe as it, as it is right now. You know, she has, uh, she has. let's see, The Shy is is um, about to go into, uh, about to show season three. They already shot season three. Mm-hmm. And then Boomerang is in season two right now off on television. Yep. You got 20s that's in season one. So that's three television shows right there that Jeez. you got. And then you're on Westworld. And then yep. you, you have uh, AT and T campaign that's going on, um, you know, where your voice is everywhere. Um, and and Queen and Slim just came. I mean, come yeah. on, she's, she's dynamic. She's taking over the world, man. It's ridiculous how great she is. Bonkers. 
bonkers. So is there something that like having been running the race for so long now that you've learned along the way that like you weren't expecting? Um, hmm. I know, right? I get you comfortable, and then I hit you with the ones that make yeah, you think. Yeah, you, you hit me with the one that I actually got to think about that I wasn't expecting. Got him. Yeah, you definitely got me on that one, man. Um, <clears throat> you know what I wasn't expecting, because um, I didn't know to expect it, mm-hmm. was how regular everybody is. You know, when, oh. when, you, when you get to the level of seeing celebrity, right, you think you'd be like, oh, my gosh, that's such and such. Right. But then when you look at such and such, you say, oh, okay, well, he's actually small. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like, like, you're just like, oh, okay, they're just like everybody else. Like, you know, I've been in settings now to where I've been around a lot of celebrities. Right. You know, and, you know, of course, I'm not going to name any names or say, oh, this person was underwhelming. Right. But, um, (laughs) you know, that'd be kind of crazy. But, but, uh, you know, you you just kind of see them like, oh, okay, they're people. Right. You know, these these behemoths, these these uh, juggernauts in the game, you know, you look and you're like, oh, OK, I get it. Right. I get it. You know what I mean? Like, OK, you know, and I guess I wasn't expecting that because I didn't know to expect that. I didn't necessarily think to myself, like, you know, that this person that's larger than life is actually, you know, fairly common, you know, when, when I when I, you know, stand next to them. Right. You know what I mean? Almost it's like, oh, OK. Them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, and it's like, oh, OK. Well, cool. That inspires the hell out of me because I know if this person has it in them, then shoot, I can go for it too because, you know, they they they're just like me. They're yeah. Person. Why not? Yeah. That's pretty good. So then, what advice would you give to somebody who wanted to get out there and start running the race as well? Oh man, um, to start, to start. You know, the 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 hardest part about starting is to start. Yeah. Um, you know, it like like you know my story. You know, wasn't conventional. I didn't do. I didn't go to a performing arts high school and then go to Juilliard and then get an agent and all the rest. Like I was working, um, in in you know behind God's back in New Jersey. Right. You know what I mean. And where there was there was South Jersey at that. Like there's not an acting pool in South Jersey. You know, you got to travel up to New York for that. Yeah. So you know, but I just started and I didn't know necessarily how to start. I just, hey, started going to a class and then started meeting people that were doing things and I started doing things too. And as I started doing things, I started doing more things and then more things got into more things and then the more things got into the right things and then the right things got me to, you know, ultimately following that path to ultimately getting where I am now. So you just got to start no matter where you are. And, you know, because you could be in the middle of America, you know, in, in, in freaking, I don't know, wherever arkansas somewhere completely yeah. you know d- 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 distant from new york or from from california or from atlanta um and you could you could still you know be be even taking classes out there and, and going on online and, and going to the master classes that are on youtube now and, yeah and uh, and different things like that and picking up books and and uh you know, recording monologues and, and, you know, recording yourself and, and, you know, taking even online Skype classes, whatever you can, you know, get started um, and just start to nurture that passion. If you truly have a passion for it, just find a way to grow it. You know, there's no right or wrong answer. There's no traditional conventional story that works for everybody. You know, it's not two plus two equals four. It's, 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 you know, art, it's color, it's life. So therefore, you know, your story is going to be unique. All you got to do is just, just start as soon as that fire is lit, um, start to start to breathe into that thing, start to ventilate that thing, start to make that thing grow because, um, ultimately that, that flower is going to blossom into your own unique story. Um, so you just got to start. Yeah, it's like don't wait, you know. Yeah, don't wait, don't wait at all. Just go. You know what I mean? Figure figure out how to start and take that first step because that first step is going to lead to that second step for sure. Yeah, there you go. Is there a role or a type of character that you want to play but haven't yet? Um, mm, I know. I want to play. I want to play action. I want. I want to play. Uh, I can see it. You know. Yeah, I, I want to do you know the 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 Will Smith thing the way hell you know yeah. he got those yeah he gets to say lines like that like hell yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> after he punches the alien in the face like yeah. I want to be that guy there you, you go. know um, you know definitely so uh, action uh, you know suspense thriller I, man you know I'm just an actor right like an all through and through I want to play everything like if it if it lives and breathes man I want to play it you there know you I can play it. Um, you know, so 
I, I just I'm looking forward to see what you know with God, with the universe, you know, uh, you know, whatever you like to call the 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 source above, you know, has in store because um, you know, I this has been a tremendous journey just in this this acting business and uh none of it's been premeditated. So uh I just can't wait to see what life throws at me next, you know. Yeah, and I can't wait to watch it. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it for sure. And just like that, we've been talking for over an hour, buddy. We did it. I know, man. I know. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> this was super fun, man. Yeah, same here. Same here, man. It's been it's been great. Uh, you know, just talking to you, being on your show, man. And uh man, definitely been a pleasure. Yeah, right on. So before I let you go, uh, where can people find you online? So you can find me, all my handles are Leland B. Martin. There you um, go. that's uh Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Leland B. Martin. Boom. Um, and you can catch me on Boomerang Wednesday nights at 1030. Um, you know, we, we, we're four episodes in, so, you know, you can, you can, uh, you know, uh, catch that back up on, 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 on your BET app or, you know, on demand or Philo or wherever you watch it. Um, for sure. Uh, you know, a second season and, and we, you know, halfway through, yeah. uh, you know, join the journey. Get you know, it. For sure. You got options. And, <laughs> Absolutely. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.